When nighttime comes, you can say goodnight to the sun, our daytime star. And you can say hello to all the millions of other stars that shine in outer space. Remember, the stars are always out there. Outer space does not disappear during the day and then reappear at night. You can see those stars at night because the sun's light is no longer shining on your part of the earth, but the stars are always there. At dusk, just after the sun has set in the west, but before all of its light has faded, the first stars of night appear. One, two, three, and then more and more. The darker it is, the more stars you can see. If you live in the city, then you can't see as many stars as people who live in the country can see. Lights in the city brighten the night sky and make it difficult to see the stars. But out in the country, and especially out in the wilderness, far away from buildings, streetlights, and cars, the night sky seems to explode with glittery, twinkling stars. They may look small, but many of those stars that you see are actually incredibly large. Many stars are larger than our own sun, which, as you may remember, is big enough to fit a million Earths inside. The stars look small because they are so far away. And the stars look like they're blinking, but they're actually shining steadily. The gases in our atmosphere cause their light to look like it is twinkling. Just how far away are the stars? Here's one way to think about it. If someone put you on the fastest rocket ship today and launched you out into space, it would take you thousands of years, maybe 73,000 to be exact, to reach the nearest star beyond our sun. That's pretty far away. However, you can still see the light from that massive hot star, even though it looks more like a tiny twinkling diamond from here on the Earth. At night, astronomers study the stars. Astronomers work in observatories which are buildings where large telescopes are housed. Observatories are built high up on hills or mountaintops where there are no buildings or trees to block the telescope. The roof of the observatory is designed so that it can open and allow the giant telescope inside to move up and down and all around without bumping into anything. Astronomers need really big, powerful telescopes to do their work. This is the kind of telescope you find inside an observatory. (laughs) That's a big telescope. But you don't need a massive telescope and a fancy mountaintop observatory to enjoy the wonders of stargazing or looking at the stars. If you want to get a better look at the stars or a closer look at the moon, a pair of binoculars will do the trick. Or you can use a telescope like this one. You'd be surprised by all the different things you can see through a telescope. Through careful study, Astronomers have figured out many interesting facts about stars, even though no person is able to travel and study a star up close. Astronomers have learned that some stars are older than other stars. Some stars are hotter than other stars. Some appear red through the telescope, and others appear blue. Stars change color depending on how hot they are, and how hot a star is depends on its age, size, and other factors. But 
you do not need a telescope in order to appreciate the wonders of outer space. If you look at the sky long enough on any given night, you will eventually see a meteor, or shooting star. A meteor is the light we see when a rock that flies through space enters Earth's atmosphere. The meteor, or bright light, appears as a streak in the sky before it disappears in the blink of an eye. At first glance, a meteor may look like a star is literally falling from the sky. However, stars do not move like that. Meteors, although they are sometimes called shooting stars, are not stars at all. There are billions of rocks and other debris in outer space. Some are quite large, but most are tiny, between the size of a grain of sand and a baseball. These rocks and debris are whizzing around all over the place in outer space. Occasionally, one crashes toward Earth. Before it can hit Earth's surface, however, it crashes into Earth's atmosphere. For a space rock, hitting the Earth's atmosphere is like a person running into a brick wall, except the atmosphere doesn't stop it. The rock or debris hits the atmosphere at an incredible speed and keeps moving through. As it does so, it generates intense heat. The rock burns up as it enters the uppermost parts of Earth's atmosphere, creating a streak of light, a meteor, or a shooting star, as some people call it. Occasionally, bits and pieces of rock survive their trip through the atmosphere and fall to Earth. This is rare, but it does happen from time to time, and it is possible to find pieces of them on the ground. When part of a rock or debris survives the trip through the atmosphere and lands on Earth, it is called a meteorite. The meteorite in this picture is probably not the most exciting rock you've ever seen, but it's pretty amazing to think that it came from outer space. Sometimes, by studying meteorites, scientists discover new types of rock that do not exist on Earth. Outer space is a strange and wonderful place. By studying the stars, planets, and other objects in space, astronomers have learned many things about this incredible universe, of which we and our planet Earth are but a teeny tiny part. Feast your eyes on this massive star cluster for a moment, and imagine if you can the incredible number of stars and the incredible distances between us and them, and how much there is for us to learn about our universe. For instance, look at the very center of this photo. There, in the middle, is a little cluster of 14 bluish stars. Added together, astronomers estimate that these 14 stars combined are over 20,000 times larger than our sun. That's so huge, it's hard to think about. And that's just 14 stars out of all the stars in this photo. Thank you.